Thank you for listening to Discovering the Scriptures with Dr. Peter John Parisis. Currently, we are in Daniel chapter 4, verse 30. First reading from the King James Bible, quote, The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of of my majesty unquote let us pray father I come to you in prayer this morning first of all to thank you for providing me the opportunity to pray to you and also Lord the opportunity to do this ministry this morning it has been some time since my last recording so much has gone on I do pray and ask that you would be with each family and each person who has suffered loss of loved ones, that you would comfort them and you would help them to realize that you are sovereign and that you are true. This morning I ask that you would help us, each and every one of us here to hear the Holy Spirit, our teacher, to hear his teaching, to hear his instruction, and to be obedient. And I also ask that you would give us wisdom and knowledge concerning the scriptures that we are looking at now, and that you would help us to meditate upon them throughout the day. You are great, Father, and I do thank you for all that you have done, everything from the clean water to the birds in the air to your word being available to being able to gather together even if it's only together like this or together in the meeting places that are possible or if we're even fortunate to meet in a church thank you Guide us and direct us today. Bless our way, please, and help us to see all the challenges through your eyes and help us to be more like Jesus. To pray for those who use us, to pray for the backstabbers, to do good to them, as hard as it may be. Now at the end of this prayer, I'm going to give you some time out of respect to answer and to talk back with me. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Now let's go ahead and look at this verse and take a look at it in Young's Literal Translation. The king hath answered and said, Is not this that great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom in the might of my strength and for the glory of my honor? Unquote. Let's go ahead and parse this out. And see the full meaning of the boasting that King Nebuchadnezzar is doing and not giving any credit to God. Now remember we're looking at the Aramaic language, the court language, which Daniel has switched from Hebrew to. And let's find out what we got. The king spake, well it's parcel out spake. It's a PL stem, so casually said, participle aspect, so that means to be. So just very casual. The king spake casually, and he said, again, P.O. stem, casually, and participle, to be, is not. Now let's go ahead and do a definition of this, just to make sure, because we are looking at a different language here. Is not. Okay, the definition is, no, not, nothing. So it's exactly plainly what we see here. Is not. Okay, continuing on with the parsing. This, 
great Babylon that I have built, let's parse out have built. PL stem, casually written. Perfect aspect, so it is a completed action. Continuing on, for the house. Now, what does he mean for the house? Because that seems kind of strange to me. Looking at the definition of this, house, house of men. Could also be interpreted as house of God. But as we see, he's using house of men. Continuing on with the parsing from the original language. House of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. I think that's pretty well plain there, what's going on. Now I stopped for a moment I wanted to look at the interlineal Bible to see the breakdown that they have in here and how is he talking. Everything is masculine singular. He is boasting of himself. My honor. My power. My might. All of this is all in the masculine singular. It's all him boasting. Now, let's take a look at the scripture in context. Remember that Daniel chapter 4 is the entire paragraph. So if we wanted to read it completely in context, we would read the entire paragraph. But since we've been studying it, we're just going to go backwards a little bit and find out where is this place. Now, we have here Daniel talking at the end of Daniel 4, 26. So let's go there and then continue on. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. Unquote. That's in the King James Version. And as we can see from all of this, that prophecy that Daniel has told King Nebuchadnezzar is starting to take place. Now, let's go ahead and look at the commentaries on this verse now and see what they have to say and see how we are looking at this. Now, remember, I'm presenting all of this so that you can make up your mind on the scripture. We just present the facts and only the facts, and that's it. So let's go on to see John Gills now. Quote, The king spake and said, Either within himself or to his nobles about him, or perhaps to foreigners, he had took up with him hither to show the grandeur of the city. Is not this great Babylon that I have built? He might well call it great, for according to Aristotle it was more like a country than a city. It was, as Pini says, 60 miles encompassed within the walls. And Rhodes confirms it was 404 scores furlong round, and such the greatness of it is so beautiful as ascribing the building of it to himself, because there was no other city known like it. See Jeremiah 51 58. Though the king seems to have gone too far. In looking at the ascribing the building to himself only, and at least he was not the original builder of it, for it was built many hundreds of years before he was born by Nimrod or Belus, who were the same. Genesis chapter 10, verse 10. And was much increased and strengthened by Semiramis, that's S E M I R A M I S, the wife of his son. Niras, that's N-I-N-U-S. 
therefore to her sometimes the building of it is ascribed but inasmuch as it might be in latter times greatly neglected by the Assyrian kings Nineveh being the seat of their empire Nebuchadnezzar when he came to the throne and especially after he had enriched himself with the spoils of the conquered nations greatly enlarged beautified and fortified it and Belarus relates that he not only adored the temple of Bel, Bel therewith but of the city which was of old he made a new one and fortified it built three walls within and as many without and another royal palace continues to his fathers which greatly exceeded it and hanging gardens in it which looked at a distance like mountains for the pleasure of his wife and now because he had done so much to the repairing, enlarging, and fortifying of this city, he takes the honor to himself of being the builder of it, and this was done, he says, for the house of the kingdom, that it might be the seat of the empire, proper place for the royal family to dwell in, and have their palace, and keep their court in. By the might of my power, through the great riches he was possessed of which he employed in many great works as before related to the advantage of the city he takes all to himself and excludes all instruments and even god himself though unless the lord build the city in vain the builders build is quoted in psalms 127 verse 1 for the honor of my majesty <laughs> not so much for the benefit of the city for the good of his subjects as for the honor and glory of himself, to show his riches, power, grandeur, and to make his name immortal to future ages. Unquote. I think right here in this commentary in the twenty first century we are seeing as much as possible our current leaders here in the United States as being as narcissistic as this man was no empathy at all everything's all about what he does and can do uh, have we not been so wise as to put away all these kind of leaders and all this kind of corruption it's amazing we can't look to man we have to look to God to get any kind of satisfaction whatsoever well here we are and we're seeing narcissism. We're seeing pride. Hauntiness. Remember, hauntiness comes before a fall. And here it is. Hauntiness in the greatest form. What's going to happen next? Pretty much no, as we've read in the scriptures in context of what's taking place. But stay tuned. We're going to go further into the fulfillment of this prophecy and why Daniel has chosen to put this in before he talks about the prophecies at the end time. They're related, I'm sure, but we'll find out as we go along. Thank you for listening to Discovering the Scriptures, and please support the Scriptures by clicking on to the ads that are here so that the advertisers will pay for being on this site, and then also they'll pay a small fee to myself, which adds up to like three, four hundred bucks, but it all helps. It's all needed because I am a working minister and I work right now currently about 60 hours a week. So I need more time so I can do more of this ministry. I need your support and prayers. Thank you and God bless.